As soon as parents Mac and Kelly begin to feel like they can live in peace once more, a sorority moves into the area and causes a commotion. They request assistance from a former fraternity member to eject them. Together, they unite and try to tackle the situation. Stick around to the end to find out how the whole story unfolds. Hello and welcome to Comedy Recap. Today we will give you a recap of the film Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising. Spoilers ahead, obviously. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. The movie starts and we see two people, named Mac and Kelly Radner, making love. However, Mac is pretty loud, and since their daughter Stella is sleeping, Kelly suggests putting a pillow over his face to keep him silent. Afterward, Kelly starts to feel nauseous. Mac asks her whether she is okay, to which she replies by vomiting on him. They agreed that Kelly is pregnant with another child. The scene changes and we are four months into the future. Mac and Kelly are quickly trying to clean the house as they are expecting someone and want to make sure the house is perfect and clean for them. We learn that the visitors are indeed potential buyers of the house, as the couple have already finalized a deal for a new house and are looking to sell this to raise money. The potential buyers come in and are impressed by how the house looks, as Mac and Kelly have removed any items of doubt such as bongs. They say that they will buy the house and Mac and Kelly celebrate. However, their property dealer reminds them that they haven't yet sold it, as it is just an escrow. When the couple angrily inquires, the property dealer tells them that they agreed that the house would first go in escrow. When they are still confused, she tells them that escrow is basically a time period in which the buyers can check and examine the property to properly make sure they are investing in the right place. The scene changes and we see a sorority meeting where they are telling the new freshmen about what the sorority is all about. We see a girl there who fires up a joint only to be stopped by the leader of the sorority. However, she doesn't like this and inquires about the parties that occur in the sorority. The leader says that the sororities cannot party much to everyone's dismay, but later she says that they can party with the fraternities and thus everyone celebrates. The scene changes and we see the same girl that was smoking the weed. They try to enter the party, however, they are nervous. We learn that their names are Shelby and Beth. They go inside but don't like the vibe, as it is basically for guys who want to get laid. They also meet with a girl named Nora. The three feel unsafe and go back to their dorm. They are smoking weed here and are talking about their past experiences. However, a guy comes in and shouts at them for doing drugs. This gets them mad and they decide to start their own sorority so that no guy can tell them to do anything. The scene changes and we see four people playing poker together. They are namely Teddy, Peter, Garf, Scooney, and Peter's boyfriend Darren. They talk about how their life has become after college. Peter talks about how he has been designing houses and Scooney tells them about the successful application he developed. Garf has become a police officer, but when they ask Teddy, it turns out he just dresses up as a bear in the shop to earn money. This was awkward as everyone is successful except for him, but they ignore to address it and continue with the game. However, suddenly, Teddy, Scooney, and Garf start singing, and Darren gets up and proposes to Peter, who accepts. Later, Peter asks Teddy to move out since Darren now is moving in. Peter agrees and goes out, but starts running and crying. He runs all the way to a house which neighbors Mac and Kelly. Here it turns out Shelby, Beth, and Nora are negotiating a deal to rent the house. Teddy asks them what they are doing here, to which they say they want the house but don't have the money since the dealer was asking for $5,000 a month. Teddy tells them a scheme about five buckets and collecting money and thus helps them secure the deal. He then becomes their mentor as they make him feel valued. Say The girls soon move in and have their first gathering. Upon learning that their neighbors are a sorority, Mac and Kelly rush over to introduce themselves. The two ask Shelby to try and keep the noise down for the next month until they are in escrow. To cope with Shelby, Mac and Kelly call her father. Her dad finally fires her after she insisted that she was fighting the patriarchal system and attempting to be independent. After knowing that the Radners did this, the girls declare war on them. On the other hand, Teddy falls out with Pete and Darren after a fight. Teddy thus moves out with his belongings. Coming back to the war, the girls tease Mac as he gets into his car while Kelly hoses them down and later they throw used tampons through the window. They also make a lot of noise every night, annoying the Radners. Dean Gladstone is informed by Mac and Kelly, but she is powerless to stop them because they are a separate sorority. In retaliation, Mac convinces Jimmy to assist him in collecting bugs that spread throughout the entire house and make the girls pay for an exterminator to fumigate it, which costs them a lot of money. Thus, to raise the money, the girls plan to sell pot to the students because they are aware that the school's tailgate is that weekend. Teddy criticizes the plan, stating it repeats the mistakes he and his fraternity made. As a result, Teddy is kicked out of the house by the girls. Shelby makes a police call to dispatch the other marijuana traffickers on campus as soon as he leaves. 
Garf and Officer Watkins go on an arresting rampage as a result of this. As he was kicked out, Teddy makes the decision to work with the Radners to destroy the sorority in revenge. To steal the marijuana, they all go to the tailgate party. While Mac rushes after stealing the marijuana in a garbage bag, Teddy diverts the girls' attention by dancing on stage without a shirt on. The girls find out, but it's too late. Now they want revenge. Their next action is to replace Mac and Kelly's phone with their own. Kelly and Paula question Mac at work after tricking her into believing he is somewhere that only Jimmy knows about. The girls ultimately direct Mac to Sydney, Australia. When he returns, Mac and Kelly discover that they have been robbed and the sorority is selling their belongings. Now, since the rent was overdue, the sisters discover an eviction notice pinned on their front door. Shelby claims that since they hardly have enough money to survive, the only way they can defeat the Radners is if they give up their morals and hold a straightforward frat party with more sex appeal. They spread the word about their party to every student on campus, which encourages more guests to arrive at the residence. You're funny. <laughs> Knowing stopping the party will destroy the sorority, Teddy tries to turn off the electricity as Jimmy and Paula enter the party covertly. Teddy enters the electrical box, but there is a backup power supply for the girls. To prevent them from calling the police, Shelby rushes to the Radner's home and steals their phone before fleeing. Teddy and Mac pursue her to the garage, but Shelby tricks them and keeps them locked inside. They make an effort to smash the doors down, but fail. They decide to escape by utilizing the force of an old car's airbags. Teddy starts off by hitting the ceiling firmly. Mac then leaps and shatters the door. When they see the party being ruined by the frat guys, the girls decide to leave the sorority and hold Shelby accountable for the misfortune. Watching, Mac and Kelly believe they have triumphed, but they begin to feel bad for them. Kelly exhorts the females to return to the principles they once upheld before selling out. After forcing the frat males to leave, the girls throw a typical girls-only party. This draws more girls that are interested in joining Kappa Nu. By the conclusion of the evening, the girls had earned enough money to rent the Radner's home. As long as they receive five buckets of money each month, Mac and Kelly are content to agree. In the ending scenes of the movie, Teddy returns to Pete's home and apologizes for losing his cool with them. He is pardoned by Darren and Pete. After three months, Pete is getting set to walk down the aisle with the aid of Teddy. Mac and Kelly are shown entering their new house in the closing shot with their newborn child. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.